I hope you guys are ready, because I had 13 Dr. Peppers before recording this episode, so we are amped up and ready to go. Oh, boy. How are you not dead? Uh, well, okay, that's a lie. I had 15 Dr. Peppers, and 16 is the one that kills you. Yeah, if that, they say it on every can. <laughs> It says it right here. Legally, you should not consume. You would think it's sixteen. You think it's twenty three because that's on there, but that's the twenty three flavors. The chai. Twenty three flavors. <laughs> but it's a doctor. It's a doctor pepper. It's, I mean, it's, it's obviously doctor. healthy. <laughs> he, he has to abide by you know all of the. This isn't no Mister Pip, all right. <laughs> is it, Dude, I remember when I used to think like energy drinks were awesome. I did think it was really weird when it was like set on the can. It's like really don't 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 drink more than two of these a day. It's like why would a company like want me to buy less of their product? <laughs> oh, maybe they're just fucking horrible for you. <laughs> also legally, you know, because some people have some people have zero restraint when it comes to drinking them. Hey, you guys remember when Four Loco was uh, you know Good. actually killed somebody? <laughs> I I know the stories. Yes. Oh man! For Loco is what God used to cull the weak, <laughs> <laughs> and then they got re-released, and they're like, "Okay, we took all, a lot of the caffeine out of it because uh, gave people heart attacks." <laughs> yeah, the amount of Four Loco jet fuel pumping through my veins during all night Smash Brothers tournaments was good. Good time <laughs> in my life. Yep. <laughs> I'm surprised you remember it. <laughs> it was amazing. <laughs> he remembers every bit of it. Um. <laughs> So I have I have a fun little fun little icebreaker game uh, for us for us today. Um, so I, I don't remember where I learned this, but it's a very fun game that you can. Uh, I've, and maybe I've seen it on social media, but it's really funny. Um, so what it is is that I I'm going to uh, say a, uh, a a superpower of of whatever kind, and then the next person in line will talk about the drawback of that power. Okay, the drawback can be anything. It doesn't have to be something related to that. It could just be a drawback of any kind. Mm-hmm. Okay, I saw this floating around the thread. Okay, it's, it's, right, yeah. So, so probably, probably see this. It's very fun, and I think it would be very fun for us to just try to make it as horrible as possible for each food for power that we come up with. Uh, nice. So, so here, here's what I'll do. Here's what I'll do. I will say, I will say, I will say the superpower for me first, and then mm-hmm. whoever wants to go after that, and then. The next person will say their superpower, you know, and we'll go in turn. But you will get me at the end, giving you the worst. Whoever goes last before me, I should say, mm-hmm. is is going to have give me their superpower, and then they have to deal with whatever I <laughs> make what make the, make the drawback. Uh, and I, I can I, I can make it pretty fine. So I'm gonna go pretty easy here. Uh, teleportation. So okay. Power self oh. power teleportation drawback is. The drawback have- is that every time you enter a room, after every time you use the power, you have to then make an excuse as to uh, why you need to leave. <laughs> <laughs> so as soon as you get somewhere, you have to make an excuse to whoever's around why you have to go, <laughs> and then you have to leave. It's like vamp- like opposite vampire rules. <laughs> You're not supposed to be here. <laughs> uh, sorry, my grandmother's in the hospital. <laughs> I gotta go. <laughs> you just appeared. Sorry, I just, I just don't like you. <laughs> All right, so Kel, you, you now you give a superpower, and then whoever whoever wants to go next, they they will do okay. the drawback. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna go stretchy limbs, so stretchy body. Oh, okay, mm. okay. All right, m- m- Mr. Fantastic kind of thing. Yep. There is. One day out of every month that you have no control over it, you just are a pool that exists in your house that rolls around. <laughs> is it a random day, or is it a day I can plan on? Uh, every single month, first day, it's randomly generated, and you don't know what day it is. Ooh, okay, oh, that's, that's even better. That's even better. <laughs> I, I'm just thinking of, like, one day you go, use your powers, and then all of a sudden your arm doesn't tighten back, as it normally would. And you're just like, well, oh boy. Oh, man. Can somebody get a wheelbarrow and take me home? <laughs> no, please, please. <laughs> this is just this is just unfortunate. <laughs> the guy, the, the guy we interviewed today, he just he just turned into a pile of goo. <laughs> I was I was out bowling with Kel and he just just collapsed into a puddle. Just, <laughs> oh yeah, that's Kel. Sometimes he turns into goo. <laughs> 
All right, my superpower is going to be telekinesis. Hmm. Every time you move something, you have to say, "Oop, there it is." <laughs> All right. Well, I'm I'm instantly a social recluse, never leaving my home. <laughs> it just. <laughs> He's by himself in his house. He can just hear. There it is. <laughs> He's just, it's just the remote coming to his hand. <laughs> Still not that bad. <laughs> it was like an apartment building has like neighbors on either side. Just hear him through the walls all the time. Just gotta just scream it as loud as I can. <laughs> it's like banging on the walls. Or it's like get your just get up and get the fork yourself. <laughs> Actually, that's the caveat. You can't say it. You have to scream. Right, yeah, you have to be vocal about it. Yeah, you got to project yeah, a bit. Yeah. <laughs> Bang on the wall. Get up and get your own shit. I just scream it. I was born a god! <laughs> Oops, there it is. <laughs> uh, Alright, uh, so Timmy, uh, you know, now you need to do superpower. Um, my superpower would be, man, I'm just going to go with super speed. Oh, boy. You got to buy a new pair of Yeezys every time you use your power. Burn <laughs> <laughs> right off. <laughs> See, he has uh, super speed, but he has no clothing that can withstand the friction, so he just, <laughs> boom, he's naked all the time. That's that <laughs> His skin is fine. It's it's the clothes. Yeah, it's the clothes. I mean, like you gotta think with the flash, he had to get a specific uniform that can withstand the friction. Yeah, so. yeah, exactly. But no yeah. uniform works. Every uniform is a failure. Yeah. So you're, so you're so, Tim going like, you know what? I can save time by running the work, and it's <laughs> because if he oh, ever goes foot. long distance, he just ends up completely nude. If it's a short distance, he he just shows up and he just has no crotch and no armpits anymore. <laughs> Imagine that thing going in the wind. <laughs> I don't even think it would flap. It would just kind of be like held against him. <laughs> <laughs> Until you hit turbulence, and then it just. See, it's either that or the fact because uh, I had two. I was like either friction or the fact that bugs would be flying into your face the oh, entire time. Gosh. Right. That's an that's a, an inevitability though. That mm. that, that, that oh, would yeah. that would just happen. <laughs> What type Mark's of, turn. I know. See, the worst one that I can... I mean, the best one I can think of at the same time is uh, uh, telepathy. Uh, I mean, that's easy. Hold you, on. You literally... Uh, hold on. Telepath Jake has to be aggressive about this. <laughs> I'm, yeah. Telepathy, except it only works on raccoons. <laughs> I hate those so, little bastards. So boring. <laughs> <laughs> you can only communicate tele telepathically with raccoons. Just having, <laughs> having a normal conversation with a colleague, and all of a sudden you break off and just yell, I know you want trash! <laughs> <laughs> I know! Oh. I know! I know there's ten of you! Oh and also God. all the raccoons know and constantly follow you around. <laughs> right. oh. You know, that that would inevitably lead to him just becoming a supervillain who trains a <laughs> raccoon army because he understands them. And what else are you going to do with that power? I, I know. Except for become a raccoon supervillain. Man, that movie would still be better than Ant-Man. Oh. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, well, if we have a movie adaptation, we will definitely be one point higher than Ant-Man because yesterday's episode was pretty fire. Uh, mm -hmm. It wasn't as stinky as some might say it was. <laughs> uh, mm. But yesterday, or, uh, well, not yesterday. <laughs> we didn't record last yesterday. Nope. We, well, that was last. Week. It was last week. <laughs> yeah, Jake. What the fuck? Yeah, this is the same day, same night, same recording session. <laughs> uh, so uh, last week, you guys fought a uh, large creature that goes all the way back to first edition D and D. Actually, Whoa, wow. um, I always love it when when they when they scale them all the way up to the different editions. So the the cat of Levis, uh, big stinky elk or moose like creature, um, and. Uh, I want to uh, <laughs> I want to I wanna point out that uh, Kelly was there from my house today, and he and he turned to me at one point. And he was just like, "I knew that bastard was doing something with the tissues in his nose." <laughs> I know, I knew what he was doing. Yeah. Yeah, the second you mentioned that, I was like, "We're fighting something stinky." Yeah, yeah. Kesher was about to go find some guy and spank his ass in the town square. <laughs> 
Uh, well, if you want, we can just jump right into it. Uh, so, a- a- yeah, after Grimshaw's th- got the flames burning, so he's ready. Okay, uh, <laughs> we'll chase this guy down. Got so, to finish, finish the job. Uh, so it's a it's a very small. Uh, it's not even it's not even like a town. It's mostly just it's like a family farm. You know what I mean? It's just that they have like a few houses and like a sort of like town center. Um, you know what this farm reminds center. me of? If you're saying that, do you know where Baltimore Corner is? In on the some, Eastern Shore. Oh no, I don't know. Maybe maybe I do. I, I just I just don't I just don't recall it. This is like Baltimore Corner, which it's Baltimore Corner. So you're like, what is this place? And then it's like it has a pizza empire and two houses, and that's it. Oh, and then you drive past it, and that's it. And it was like it was on the map for a reason at some point, and then it actually had a post office apparently. Uh, so what's funny is that I googled it, or I, I went to Wikipedia, and it says Baltimore Corner is a populated place on the eastern shore of Maryland in Caroline County. It does That's not, a very weird description. <laughs> it doesn't say how much. Uh, this yeah, town no. is populated with people. It's, 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 Real but then it says not to, not to be confused with Baltimore City, which is a very very good uh, distinction there. Uh, yeah. It is no. definitely not only populated with shape-shifting lizards. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mark, because you've been you've been that far on, on, on the east coast of uh, Maryland, uh, do you know the town of Star? Yes. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. It's like that. It's like, there's like four houses, and that's it. Mm. <laughs> or Chesterville. <laughs> that's another one. Yeah. Oh gosh. Chesterville, Chesterville, where there's there's bunkers that were made during the um, the Red Scare. So during that whole time, there's actually nuclear fallout shelters in parts of the area back there. Whoa. There's also cool. so some some people's houses just have one. <laughs> there's also Blue Ball Village in Maryland. <laughs> Oh, you, did you see that terrible map, oh Kel? Yep, yep, yep. I, lo- uh-huh, I, looked it, uh-huh. I looked it up. Blue Ball Village is a real place. Mm-hmm. In Mal- it's, near, mm. north, it's up near the PA line. Yep. Oh, there sure Damn. is. Like Butts, Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> or was it? In, is it Intersex, Delaware, or uh, oh, is it Pennsylvania? Yeah, something yeah. like that. <laughs> That's a funny one. Uh, well, this town, I'll tell you, is called <laughs> Rusty Bucket Farms. <laughs> Yeah, Kessler uh, wants to chase down the dude, the the, the kid Chris Pat Chris Pratt motherfucker. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So, uh, yeah, there's a way ahead of you. Yeah. You still got that train this guy movement. like a raptor. <laughs> uh, you guys make your way into the very very small collection of buildings here. There's like a silo and a barn, and then there's like one house and two houses, um, and then there's like some like smaller buildings that are uh, probably used for. Um, uh, to, you know, whatever they happen to be doing here. Um, you can tell just from walking up that uh, this looks to be more of a um, uh, cattle and pig farm. They don't, they're, they're not necessarily uh, growing much. They're more about uh, raising livestock. Um, and you get into, into the center of town and uh, very, uh, <laughs> very s- simple lodgings here. Um, and uh, the, the guy comes out of his house and he sees you all and he goes oh hey uh really sorry about that uh we were it's 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 been a it's been a long minute uh you guys good you're really sorry do you see this man behind me and he points to helica he almost died his blood would have been on your hands what were you doing Hugh Elk also down half his hit points, but yeah. Yeah, and that other guy too, he almost died. But he would have been alright, I think. Yeah, I would have been fine, but still. <laughs> Not me, I was never close to death at any point. <laughs> oh, oh man, I, oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, we, we, we've just, we've just had, had, had some issues. I, here, can, 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 come inside, I can, I can explain everything, and he sort of points to the porch next to him. Okay, we'll go. Real quick, does Halika actually need healing? Uh, Halika is... He healed himself. He healed healed himself up. Uh, Well, he healed himself up a bit. I mean, he's missing a few hit points. Let's see. He's missing uh, seven hit points total. Okay. Benson's going to kind of give him a a pat on the back. (laughs) It's like many people have uh, been harmed quite a bit more for the slaying of their first monster. Good job. (laughs) Am I a... Am I a real adventurer now? You're you're filling out the paperwork, we'll say. <laughs> ah, it's an internship. <laughs> <laughs> there are some things that not even I would torture someone with, and that's filling paper filling out paperwork. 
Bamboo spikes, on the other hand, they're fine. <laughs> <laughs> so as we, as we like, I kind of, I, I like take the guy's, um, like invitation to go in, but I do double speak to everyone else, except Hel- Helica doesn't understand this. Nope. Um, <clears throat> but he says, um, thank you for your, thank you for your warm welcome. It is most appreciated. Um, but you know that to mean, I don't trust this guy. Thanks. Yeah. Benson will, Benson will walk up. All right, so uh, the guy, uh, the guy motions to, to, to some chairs, um, and he's like, "Can I, can I get you a drink? Do, 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 do you need anything? Uh, water, lemonade? Uh, I just..." What? I mean, after that, a lemonade would be delightful. <laughs> what's lim- What's lemonade? The, it's the lemon and sugar. Water. Mm-hmm. Water. Mm-hmm. You don't. You don't have citrus fruit where you're from. I don't know. Would, would they have lemons in Contargo? Like I thought, we were like more north. I mean, imports. I mean, oh. yeah. Contargo's ah, yes. is Contargo's <laughs> not like north in the way that it's like. It's not like the north. Uh, right. It's we're in the Frelyord right now. They have to import everything. Yeah. Uh, no, it's also the Silver City. They're incredibly rich and uh, and uh, <laughs> full of money, uh, so they can import uh, lemons. Uh, they yeah. got the they got the lemon drip. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so uh, yeah, he he goes inside and he comes out and he's got some uh, freshly freshly made lemonade. Um, and he's just like, I'm I'm really sorry. We've we we've had some issues. We we, we were uh, uh, honestly, me and my brother, uh, we were trying to uh, we were trying to lure that creature over. Um, and uh, we we knew of the creature. Um, I didn't know what it was called, but I knew the thing was angry. And we went by it once, and it chased us. But it eventually kind of gave off. Uh, but uh, we've 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 had some issues with a barn that we were trying to tear down in order to salvage the wood from it. Uh, it's a few miles over. And he's like, but uh, these things inside of the barn have made it very difficult um, and he pulls up his side and you can see he's got these like vicious gashes like on his side um, and you can see he's got one on his shoulder and he's just like he's, he's just these like cat things he's like they're, they're horrible but but one thing we noticed about them is that they, they can smell really well so we thought if we brought that smelly bastard over there they would they would just kind of get out of here uh, but sir I can t- I can see yeah. I can see where you got the idea that's the dumbest thing you could do in this situation. The fact that you even got away from this thing once is a gift of God that you should not squander. Don't mess with these things. <laughs> What's your level? <laughs> One. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> you are lucky. Holy shit. All right. So, by the way, Elka at this point, like, he was tempting to like do what he normally did but like as soon as he gets close the smell is just radiating off this thing he's just like it's, it's not worth it like <laughs> but it's but he is bleeding like i said he is down half his hit points so healing would be appreciated yeah. uh yeah if you Hal- mention Hal- Hal- ben- oh, oh okay yeah i was gonna say that and helica can heal you up um i believe he casted two yeah i think he did two mm-hmm. of them last time uh, so let me cast those. All right, and then let me give you heal. This will be oh uh, slightly better. So this is going to be uh, thirty-seven. Okay. Points That's of healing. Nice. Uh, it's, it's not the same, but yeah, <laughs> it's, it's it's okay. Uh, didn't uh, you need one more of this? Uh, wait, hold on. So thirty-seven. You yeah. said. Yeah. Yep. Thirty-seven. Well, I was thinking, like, if um, Benson or something could do lay on hands, because then they can just take ten minutes and... Yeah, I was going to offer. Okay. So Benson, as he casts lay on hands, he just full-on decks you right in the face, and you don't get hurt, oh. you actually feel healing. <laughs> That's how this works. <laughs> <laughs> how, how much healing, by the way? Thirty. Okay. And you have plus two to your AC for the next six seconds. <laughs> This level one farmer is a uh, actually a level ten assassin. Probably <laughs> he goes, damn it! 
<laughs> well, that was my one chance. <laughs> that was my one opportunity. Like, With a tone of reluctance, uh, Kezra sees this guy's uh, foolish but courageous attempt at solving a problem, and he's like, "Perhaps we could help you with your bond since we put the since we put the beast down. Shouldn't be too much of a Wait, difficult task for us." What now? Benson is slack jawed in awe that Kezra is being generous. <laughs> hey, this man, stupid as he is, tried to do something pretty, pretty clever. And, uh, you know, I feel like it's the least we could do. Benson tries to double speak to Grimshaw. It's like, I don't think I trust him anymore. <laughs> <laughs> he says it all. I was going to say, but you can't do that. So it just comes out like that. <laughs> but no, Benson's like, he's about to like object. Be like, Kez, or this man might need a what? <laughs> <laughs> would you would you say these creatures in this, in this barn, are they like oppressing you in any way? <laughs> They, they they did say something about I don't know vacation days are dumb fair wage is a lie uh, I don't we know we must the, kill the, them <laughs> we must kill them all the, the, there's no problem with the tipping system <laughs> um, so from what this guy was saying um, yep. these creatures he said they were cat like yeah he said they were cat like. Uh, is there any way to possibly do a nature check? On what uh, yeah, yeah. If you if you want to prod him for more information, he might, he might be able to. Mm. I will prod him. With Ow! A, Stop a it! Stick. Ow! <laughs> I hope we get to this barn and it's literally just filled with cats. And he's like, I'm really allergic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I will die if I touch a cat. Okay. Uh, thirty exactly. Uh, all right. So uh, that was a thirty for a nature check. Mm-hmm. All right, so do, 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 do. Um, that is going to be a uh, yeah, that is going to be a success. So even with the negative from just hearing about it, um, so w- one of the things that he talks about is that he's like, yeah, it's like, I mean, they're they're big cats or whatever. He goes, but you ever, you ever see a cat with like eight legs? Oh, oh no. no, fuck this, oh. fuck this, oh no, <laughs> no. oh no, I think uh, fuck everything move. about this. <laughs> <laughs> I, that, that's like when Elk figures it out. He's just like, oh, no. I mean, we fought one of the... Oh, no, we fought it in sticky business. Yes, mm-hmm. yeah, you fought it in sticky <laughs> business. Uh, so <laughs> to to explain all of the players' trauma from hearing the, from hearing this description, uh, they fought an Orum Vorex in, uh, in yep. sticky business, and they fought one of them, and this guy is saying that there is multiple. How um, many... Uh, I, there, I, there's, I, I think there's two, but there might be more than that. But I've only mm. seen two at a time. My foolish Jeez. field hand left an open can of tuna in the barn, and now they're just everywhere. <laughs> I, did, I don't know where he got the can of tuna. We don't, <laughs> we don't can things. <laughs> um, right. With that check, is there anything I can get from that? By the yeah. way, like the Orm Vorax. Of course, of course. So let me let me go into what Orm Vorexes are for people that are not familiar. Orum Vorexes are highly aggressive and territorial predators that sprint on eight legs, using their terrific strength and iron-hard claws to dig through solid stone. They are cats, by the way. I want you to imagine your cat being able to dig through your stone floor. Um, a typical Orum Vorax is only three feet long, but, wi- but weighs more than 200 pounds. For its thick, sturdy bones are densely packed with muscle, making the creature very strong, but a notoriously poor swimmer. Ironic with all the legs. Um, so uh, you know that they, they they'll they they usually claim territories that span out for like a mile sometimes. So it looks like maybe these things had just held up in here, and then when these guys went to go uh, tear down the barn for and salvage it, um, it looks like it uh, did work out so well. Um, so this guy <clears throat> got lucky twice. Because he yeah. could have got just shredded apart by these yeah, things. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. yes. Oh, uh, uh, so the you want one thing from it, or you uh, get one thing from it. Um, let's see. Do you you want uh, lowest see. save? Maybe. Uh, well, is uh, yeah, Mark. What, what do you want? Do you want lowest save? Yeah. You think uh, lowest save? Uh, low save would, better. yeah, low save would be their will save. Uh, you know that they are animals, um, so they generally have a low, low will save. Okay. Yep. 
Yeah. I mean, was there any uh, what he was talking about using smell in order to do anything with him? Was that just uh, him he, talking out of his ass? Um, you think that it, with, with his knowledge of like felines and stuff like that, and the fact that they do have it, the, these things do you uh, have scent like cats. Um, so it, not a, not a terrible idea to bring something that is uh, extremely smelly to you know stink something out. Um, you don't know if you don't know how well it would work, but the idea is is not, it's not a bad one. I mean, we have a giant smelly corpse. Yeah, that's that's all I was thinking. That elk will go out to it and wear like a bandana around his face and just try like cut a piece off of it or something. Like I don't know, like. Sure. Um, I mean, that's all I can think of. I was like, because what if we like put it in something, kind of like conceal it, and then throw it into the barn? And I mean, there's also a good chance that they're going to smell us before we even get within 100 feet of the barn. True. So yeah, Benson will go help Elkwood with that. Okay. Um, all right, so yeah, you can get back. Um, <laughs> surprisingly, Carrion haven't showed up to eat the corpse yet. Weird. Um, uh, you don't know how long this thing's going to sit here, but you know it's going to smell for weeks. So Wait a second. Uh, how heavy was it? Oh, shit. Oh, <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> 2,200 pounds. Oh, uh, okay. Can you do it? We need to do the bulk conversion. Yeah. What if I cut off a part of it to make it lighter? Oh, it's like cut off a leg or something like that. Yeah, <laughs> I the the he 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 did say it was it was uh, about a mile out that this uh, this barn. So, oh, it's a, it's a mile away. Yeah. Uh, how um how long does your spell last? That 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 was yeah that was my question. Following that did, that explanation. It's it's sustained Fine. it's sustained up to one minute. So it, mm. that's too uh, far. Away. That's too far for me to carry. <gasps> well, as a bummer, I love the idea though. <clears throat> no, no. Here's the idea: we tie ropes around it, we drag it. And we get to a point where we're about a minute out, and then he lifts it up and he chucks it. Easy. Okay, I, I, I could lift. Could lift it onto a cart. Yeah, I don't want to be a downer or anything, but unless we have like six draft horses somewhere that I'm not seeing, we're not pulling this thing anywhere. Yeah. We are gods among men. <laughs> We are men among men. We happen to be exceptional, but we are men. Okay, okay. And you ever tried You're... pulling the dead weight of an elephant? <laughs> I don't think four Arnold They're... Schwarzeneggers could pull an elephant, to be honest. So that's how we oh, are. Okay, right now. fine. We're going to get into rules. We're going to get into dragging rules in, in, in Pathfinder, John. I know we can do it, but I will do okay, the math. Well, I can do 80, 80 bulk with this thing, which is about 800 pounds. This was well, wait, with, the, with, the, with the hand? With the telekinetic hull. Yeah, right, oh. right, okay. If you're dragging something, treat its bulk as half. So it's only actually a thousand pounds. So I can do the bulk conversion now. That's silly. <laughs> it's, it's just the rules. <laughs> Alright, so ten, 10 pounds is one bulk. So a thousand pounds divided by 10 is... A hundred bulk. Let's see. If we were four super soldiers from the Marvel Universe, it would still be impressive if we could drag it, a fucking I think elf. It, I think it would be effective enough to just to, like cut hide off of this creature. Oh, True. Yeah. That's, that's what I'm saying. Like, we plug could, our noses, cut hide off. If we just need the smell, that's all we need. Yeah, like probably the ass end of it probably is the worst part about it. So. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, the, the, to be fair, you're, you're not entirely sure that this plane would work. You just know that that he that he might have been onto something because these things had, do have scent. Um, okay, I'll so. go cut its anus out, and we'll take that to the barn. There we go. <coughs> aye, aye, let's do it. <laughs> he just like he's just like okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Going for the anus. You got it, boss. You got it, Rangers. Uh, Am I right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, so you uh, cut out the anus of this creature and put it into the bag of holding. Um, no, 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 no. Oh, no, 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 God. <laughs> <laughs> we don't put it in there, God damn it. You no. bastard. <laughs> no, uh, we, we get like a leather bag or some shit and <laughs> dump it in there. Hal- Hal- Halka has to carry it because he's the intern. That's true. 
Oh goodness! Oh, it smells so horrid. Oh, this hey, is. Hey, you want to be an adventurer? Oh. Is this a is oh. this a paperwork? Oh, what? Oh, oh, I'm dry heaving. I'm dry. <laughs> he does that for a mile. <laughs> <laughs> He's a cleric. He's fine. Uh, Timmy, before we uh, go to the second half of this episode, I do want to know what, what what's the qualification for you guys dragging this thing. Well, looking at the bulk rules, I came across this handy dandy table it has uh-huh. the bulk of creatures. So a huge creature oh. is typically bulk 24, but it does say that the GM might adjust this number. So if we're sticking with 100 bulk for this creature, mm-hmm. uh, according to another source of bulk rules, um, you can't carry something that is more than uh, your strength plus 10. Um, so it's like we have like limit of like 14 bulk or something. Okay. Yeah, but it's like yeah, it says you can't hold. It's you can't hold or carry more than uh, more bulk than ten plus your strength modifier. But it doesn't. It doesn't necessarily necessarily say how much you can drag. Okay. Okay, I got you. Yeah. All right. So yeah. it's 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 a little little ambiguous there, I guess, huh? It it is GM ambiguous. discretion, I guess. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, our our solution's just as good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, okay. it would be hilarious to see um, oh Tolkien at a call. Just, <laughs> I, was, I, I, was very, I was very hopeful. No, no, we it, yeah, hopeful. It, it, if it if, if it if it wasn't uh, so, so far out, I would uh, I would I would have absolutely allowed it. It's um, like also one of the things where it's like ambiguous because what the rule book says a huge creature is typically around twenty four bulk, right? Yeah. But this creature has a specific language that says it's two thousand pounds. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I, I, <laughs> so think, it, I, I think another podcast I heard got into an argument about this, where it's like, well, it's it was like an elephant or something, like a common mm-hmm. creature, and like they looked up like the real weight of an elephant in the world, but then like the book said it was like ten times that. And they were like, that doesn't make any sense. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, did, 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 did they typo as a zero on the end of it or something? Yeah, I think um, I think the the weight that's in the B series sometimes is it's kind of strange relative yeah, to what the fact, rules actually I mean, say. We did just talk about a two hundred pound three foot cat. That's very true. Mm-hmm. That's true. Yeah. Uh, okay, so let's bring you guys over to the map today. Did the description say that they were on Vorax or 200 pounds? Uh, yeah. Yes. Yes, yeah. it did. They're God. three foot, 200 pound. <laughs> they're like tiny creatures. They're small yeah. creatures. <laughs> are yeah, they, but they're they wicked small, small bro. Yeah, they're, they're small. They're small, but, yeah. small creatures. They're like the size of a medium sized dog. Oh, I thought they were medium. Oh, jeez. No, no they're bears. They're small, yeah. They're dense little <laughs> bastards. Yeah, they're like, I always thought they were more like honey badgers than anything else. <laughs> That's actually probably. Kind of close-ish. Yeah, honey badgers. Um, they're they're pretty small, but they're they're beefy dudes and yeah. vicious. Uh, oh, I do too. A, ba- a badger uh, is my favorite animal. So, whoa! Fun yeah. facts. Fun facts. Fun facts with Jake. Fun facts about Jake. <laughs> uh, so let's get you guys over to the ban. The ban. Easy there, Marky Mark. <laughs> All right, how could give us an anus? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll take it from you. Here. Guys, <laughs> you guys approach approach a old rickety barn um, that looks like it is still in use. Uh, there are um, certain effects here that uh, you, you you can see were were still used recently. Um, looks like some uh, uh, some ash and some tools that lo- look to ha- look to still be in use. Mm. Um, you know, it looked like they're still being kept up and stuff like that. So it looks like they, this thing was just kind of getting to the end of it, and maybe they moved, and so they were just like, you know, waiting, uh, waiting to move move this one last for whatever reason. Okay. Um, oh, so they're not planning on just burning it down because that's what no, I was thinking. Of. Right? I was like, why don't you just burn it? Yeah. No, yeah. no, no they, 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 no, they're they're doing their best to, to salvage it. Um, you would have learned that from the guy in town. My um, John Deere our lifetime still in there. <laughs> our lifetime supply of Oreos. Twinkies probably in there too. <laughs> uh, all right, so you guys uh, a- approach the barn. Um, it is. Uh, I'll say it's about noon uh, at this point in the day. 
Um, what do you guys do? Uh, it's a very large barn. Uh, as I said, they were um, you, you you know that this farm was uh, doing livestock. Um, so, what would you guys like to do? Well, first thing Benson is going to go is like, wait a minute. We just had one enormous fight, not like an hour ago. Like, Kiz, are you good at spells? <laughs> oh yeah, I'm fine. Well, yeah, good for this. Good for another fight. Sweat. Yeah, because I don't think he used that many, to be honest. Um, Did I take any damage that last fight? You took uh, some. Unless maybe it's the trample, but I don't know. Yeah, I, mean, I did the trample. Right. Yeah, but then uh, I, I I think Halicky healed you, so. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, he would have, and I like it took a while to get over here. I would have, you know, done my um, healing hands, lay on hands. Oh, yeah, same. Yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. should I? Right, so, you want to pull the meat out, or should I just walk in there? Well, no, no, no. Let's uh, inspect the outside first um, to see if there's like a nice hole to drop it in, or like a window or something. To toss yeah, it is out. there is there a window can be tossed in? Um, the, 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 there's no uh, no windows necessarily uh, on, on the ground floor on the ground floor at least, uh, but you can uh, you can see that there's a few holes that if you wanted to. Jam this anus into one of the <laughs> one of the broken boards on the side of the Just side of this barn. In the hole. Kezra yeah. will do so with Mage Hand. Uh, okay. Before you do that, Cal, um, should we buff it all like Stone Skin? Yeah, we can do that for y'all. Thanks. Um, um, Elk is going to move over into one of the trees. Ooh, yeah. All and right, stealth. Yeah, he'll give. He will. Um, He'll give you haste, Elkwood, and he'll give, uh, let's go, Benson, Enlarge, and Grimshaw, Stone Skin. Jesus. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Give you some extra reach like- there, Benson, and give Grimshaw a little bit of toughness. It's a, more than a little bit. That's a lot of toughness. Uh, all right. So wait, who who got enlarged? I Benson. did. Benson got enlarged. Help out his attribute of strike range. Mm-hmm. Oh, spell effect enlarged. Hold on. There we go. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, so Benson, uh, I believe that the enlarge because because it uh, affects you. You actually get uh, on your character sheet if you roll damage through that, it automatically uh, calculates in the extra two. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah. Okay. Dude, the icon for in Foundry for Enlarge is fucking intimidating. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it is. Yeah. What is it? It's like a it, big it, yeah, the, shadow demon. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's got like it's got like horns and stuff. It's just the, the it's the same one for like something else. I, I don't know why they use that one in particular. It's like um, the icon you use for the uh, big bad evil guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's all ominous looking. It's like a silhouette. Um Okay, so Benson is enlarged. Everyone else has their other buffs, uh, and then it, uh, you oh, maintain the anus into a hole. Into a hole. Uh, all right, so you uh, drop it in, and you hear a plop. Ugh. And uh, you wait a few seconds, about thirty seconds, and you do hear something inside. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> kick it in, ben, kick it in, Benson. Raffy. All right. <laughs> I just f- full on just blast my foot right through the door. Heck yeah. Uh, so there are two large barn doors. So if you would like, you can hit the doors on those and uh, kick them bad boys open. Yep. Uh, as you kick them open, you can see what looks to be a bad scene. Uh, it looks like some of the pigs that they were looking to move probably sometime later, um, maybe just didn't find the time for it for whatever reason, uh, appear to be, uh, dead. Mm -hmm. Um... One of them is uh, laying on its side in the center of the room, uh, with its, uh, uh, guts splayed out. Um... And you can see what sounds, or you can see what seems to be something on the other side of it, uh, sort of digging into it. This looks like a nat- scene from National Geographic or something like that. Mm-hmm. And you hear that that is that was actually the thing going. Wow. 
It sounds like it's just gnawing away at this thing. And I will reveal the creature to you. Oh, he's so cute. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the Orin Vorax, the creature that uh, you players are familiar with, is this small, well, big cat, I'll say. <laughs> it's a small size, but it is a small-sized feline creature with eight legs, a nasty saber-toothed tiger maul, um, and thick brown fur covering its entire body. This thing would um, fuck up probably like ten mm-hmm. lions. They're like really muscular. Yes. They're like re- yes. eight really muscular legs, too. It's just like a wall <laughs> yes. of legs. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They're not spindly I, I think, or anything. <laughs> no, I, no. I, I think it's just funny, like, opening the barn and you just see, like, a carnage and then... <laughs> One little arm borax just mm-hmm. yeah, just way in the back. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you're like, it, it, it's like a boss fight, like in a video game. You're like, oh no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. There, there's the there's the uh, one of my favorite things is the bell curve for Souls games because it's like if it's if it's your size or smaller, like early in the game, it's probably a you know pretty simple boss fight or a regular enemy. And the bigger it gets, it does get pretty hard. And then it comes back down. And if 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 an enemy is your size towards the end of the game. That guy's going to fuck you up. Yes. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, so I would like everybody to roll initiative. Can right. I use Can I use my kicking in of the door as an intimidation on my initiative? Uh, sure. That makes sense to me. Yay! Let me get everybody in here. Thank goodness, because that was not the best roll. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, let me go ahead and roll for them. Okay, uh, Sir Benson, what is your initiative with Intimidate? Eight on the die for 28. All right. Uh, Elkwood. Um, I was rolling stealth since I'm outside. Yep. Uh, 33. Good, good, good. Uh, Kezra, what is yours? Back to back to my old ways. Four on the dice for 17. Bummer. This is what it is. It is what it is. Uh, oh, let me roll Halicus. Uh, Halicus did... Okay. He did I. Uh, and Grimshaw, what was yours? Grimshaw is like snapping his finger trying to get the chrono worm to appear the chrono worm doesn't look like he's peering and all of a sudden you just see the chrono worm zippity zip around Grimshaw and you see Grimshaw's muscles become faster than they than time seems to allow as he destabilizes his timeline succeeds on the flat check so that is a 33 for his initiative oh god damn okay. Uh, okay, so you and Elkwood are tied. No, Elkwood always wins on a tie. That's right. <laughs> uh-huh. yep. Elkwood always uh, wins. Okay. Straight, I do. Yeah, you, <laughs> you can really tell that Benson was built like when Pathfinder first came out, second edition first came out, and then t- Tim built uh, Grimshaw after all the fucking additions and expansions. <laughs> <laughs> you just have to get your own Chrono Worm, Benson. I, I guess. <laughs> yeah, get yeah, your own Chrono Worm. Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, are you kidding me? They're at they're at Chrono Mart. <laughs> Cr- Chrono Mart. <laughs> there, there was a Chrono Raccoon, a Chrono Dog. I, I went with the worm. <laughs> they, they, they had a dog and a raccoon. You went with the worm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. It's all uh, you could afford, all right. <laughs> I, I really, I, I really, I, I don't know why this popped into my head, but I, I, lo- I think it'd be really funny if somebody's like Patronus was a worm. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's just, just a worm, just like or it's just an earthworm. <laughs> yeah, it just. Oh so, man, what if it's so fully earthworm, Jim? <laughs> <laughs> Be like, it, he'll he'll get there. I promise. <laughs> uh, so the Orum Vorox that you guys see is actually going first here. Oh, uh, shocking! It is. So it is going to. Uh, let's see, what kind of speed does it have? Uh, no, I don't think it's going to do that. Um, so here is what it's going to do. Um, it is going to start walking towards you guys um, and very intimidatingly, um, and it is going to try and roar out, <laughs> try to intimidate you. He's all. just standing there menacingly. menacingly. <laughs> uh, so it is going to try and do this here. 
Um, it's so cute, though. It is, it is pretty cute. Um, uh, it does not have uh, <laughs> a Tivinate as a uh, trained uh, skill, but let's just see how bad this is. He might be uh, cute, but this motherfucker is an escaped government asset. <laughs> uh, you know, that was a that was a, a sixteen on the die for a sixteen, so obviously a fail. Um, uh, uh, but it thinks that it's people. <laughs> but uh, it, it, it that, that is his turn. It is it, it is it is going to try and uh, call out and try to intimidate you as you have interrupted its lunch. Oh snap! Uh, Oakwood, it is your turn. You are outside in a tree. I'm just looking off into the distance and contemplating life. <laughs> oh yeah, there's a battle going on. Um, he is going to take two actions since he's hasted, correct? Yes. Uh, cool. So he is going to. Ah, uh, he'll be taking three actions basically to get over here. Uh, yeah. Oh, to the to the the, the front of the barn. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. He, he'll he'll stealth behind Benson. He's going to use Benson's body as a just a just a wall. Fair enough. He is and, large. And um, he'll see the orn borax um, going to uh, uh, the bows out. He's just going to take a shot. All right. So why not? Small target. Yeah. Yep, I, w- I will say that he does have cover from Benson. Um, Damn it, Benson, you're so thick. Get out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> Clap my ass cheeks. He's alerting the orange borax. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a 33 to hit. Uh, 33s, man. Uh, yeah, was a, that's a lot of this. Uh, so even with the cover, that is going to be a hit on this thing. Ooh. All right. Ooh, solid roll. Oh, my God. Uh, 33 damage. What nice. the fuck? Well, Interesting. Elk was <laughs> yeah. been an absolute unit <laughs> yeah, no, lately. I mean, this isn't going to show anything, but yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, I'm nice. like, thir- I rolled a 33. Stealth, 33. Attack roll, 33. Damage roll, 33. <laughs> <laughs> I'd just be All dropping right. the 33s tonight, there, boys. There's a glitch in the Matrix. <laughs> just hey, keep I know, it. right? Just keep it. <laughs> just keep, keep it going. going. It's advantageous. We call that a feature. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, you, is that the end of your turn? 33? <laughs> yes. 33. What is your 33. I have 33 more actions. Um, <laughs> if you're having girl problems, I feel bad for you, son. I got 33 problems. Damage is not one of them. <laughs> Wait, Mark, how old are you? Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, fuck. This is like that weird movie. Uh, what's it? The, tw- the number 23. The number 23. Uh... What's happening? What's happening? Wait, Mark, are you actually 33? Yes. <gasps> no. It's freaking way. This is fucking creepy. Wait, what's your house? What's the? What's your address? No, we can't say that on there. 33, 33. Bleep it out. What's your house number? 33 on 33rd row. Uh, no, oh, no, my it, God. Yeah. Yeah. No. It's, it's not that. It, it it's extends not that. only to rolls, apparently. Oh. <laughs> in your age. Um, all right. You there sleep. are three digits in the house number. Oh, God, my God. All oh, you guys no. are old. <laughs> <laughs> and then you can divide the house number by three. <laughs> <laughs> if you divide right, so Mark's house number by 33. <laughs> Uh, Elkid, you hit this thing square on the shoulder with a solid arrow, um, and it calls out, Wow! Uh, Grimshaw, it is your turn. Oh, man, it's so far away. Uh, Run in there, man. My, my chaps are, are cooled down from the previous battle, uh, as is canon. And, uh-huh. uh, I'm going to, oh, I'm going to look to Benson as a free action. What's the move, Captain. Well, I've got to get out of the... Well, I have to get out of this doorway so Elk can shoot it. <laughs> <laughs> big Benson. <laughs> me, Benson. Me, big. <laughs> Tell me about the rabbits. <laughs> uh, well, I don't think this thing has any ranged attacks. We have a, an, air, an arrow caster and a spell caster. So I am going to... 
raise my shield and I'm going to ready an action that when it comes within striking range, I shall strike it. I would like to point out that whenever I shoot my uh, bow in the future, I will be referring to myself as an arrow caster. (laughs) I was about to say something. I was like, an arrow caster. (laughs) Yep. What's it called? I don't know what you're talking about. (laughs) Arrow cast. Arrow cast. The the, the next time, the next time I I, I make a, I make another gunslinger when I play Henry again. Bullet caster. I about to say they're not called gunslingers, Jake. They're called bullet casters. Bullet casters. Yeah. Uh, All right. So you're ready. You're ready in action. You said. Yes. I'm gonna use my sixth chamber spell slot. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So the. You guys hear something up above you. Oh, as no. out of the the top window there that you that you see on, on typical barns, um, you hear a number of legs come going. Uh, as one of them jumps directly down in front, uh, or I, I'll say, actually no, he can. Uh, no, he can definitely make it behind Kezra and Elkwood as they are standing what? side by side. Okay. You said there was no windows. Uh, no windows on the ground floor. <laughs> oh. Oh. Ah. Okay. Well, Sorry. priorities just, just changed. Uh, that, that That's a little bit of semantics. <laughs> that really is. Hey, I want to go through the windows. There's, There's no, no windows. windows. <laughs> <laughs> well, this thing just jumped through a window. Oh, it's on the second floor. Oh, up. You didn't say so. Jake's like, yeah, no windows. Do me a favor and blow me. But you meant those windows? <laughs> I thought you guys were looking for a first floor window. I apologize. No, we're going to chuck it. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, let's let's just establish a standard. When we say we look okay. for windows, it is all windows. It is all, all windows. windows. I understand. <laughs> <sighs> Aaron Vorax uh, jumps down. Uh, I mean, he could have jumped from the roof. Who cares? Uh, he jumps. He jumps down, and he appear and he jumps behind Kezra and Elgood. Fuck. Uh, and I will. Uh, so that was actually two actions to do that. So he's only going to be able to get off one strike on you, Elgood. Oh gosh! Attack the meteor! <laughs> Attack the orb, please. Uh. So he's going to strike out with a jaw as he goes to bite you. Uh, it's going to be a 36 hit. Yeah, it's not a crit, though. Whew. I only have 10 foot of reach, right? Uh, yeah. I guess. Oh, yeah, 10 foot, yeah. Yeah. Uh, 23 points of slashing damage, or piercing damage. Whew. Something chomps into your side. Ow. Um, and I, will I now couldn't have... see it from the window up there. Um, I said it was the roof. I changed it. Uh-huh. <laughs> so you're rewriting history, Jake? <laughs> I retconned it, so I wasn't wrong. Actually, there's no roof on this place. Jake's like, I happen to be God. Fuck you. <laughs> I, so what's funny is uh, I'm, I'm watching uh, I'm watching uh, The Boys right now, and uh, you, <laughs> I don't know if you've watched that, but there's a lot of lying. A lot of lying in that and changing history. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, uh, so I, I feel like I'm like, no, it's, I mean, no, he, it was on the roof. <laughs> <It's though>. the <laughs> roof. <laughs> this happened, and I will explain in a way that makes sense to you, idiot brains. <laughs> Does it uh, take fall damage? I'm just curious. Uh, no, no, Ooh, no, it okay. would not. No. A cat has cat fall? <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? I think it would be really funny if they made it to Orm Vorax and never land on their feet. <laughs> it's just, it's just so too heavy. many feet. Too many feet, you can't yeah. do it. Uh, Benson, it is your turn. Uh, Benson, as a free action, will look down at Grimshaw and say, like, which one do you want? <laughs> we have to protect our allies. We kill the one close. Yeah, but it might also be worth it to... Uh, you know what? This is too long for a free action. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all just take your time with this free action conversation. <laughs> but I really think we should debate about this, Grimshaw. <laughs> There's right. elk screaming in the background. <laughs> You're talking like an episode of Dragon Ball Z right now, all right? Benson's going to power up the Super Saiyan 3. Uh, <laughs> Uh, right. I'll allow it. <laughs> Benson is going to move up to where he can attack this thing. Um, you have reach. You don't have to get that close. 
But yeah, maybe but, he uh, wants to give AC bonus to poor old Elkwood. Yeah. I mean, yeah. technically he still gets it from there. Oh, yeah. that's true. Yeah, that's true. So, yeah, you can you could be 10 feet from it and still give yeah. your bonuses to uh, Elkwood 31 and stuff. 31 so. on the first attack. 31, that is a hit. Yay, it's not like that stupid giant thing we fought that did AC of like 37. Oh. <laughs> I'm such a bitch. Alright. <laughs> What's going on over there? <laughs> 15 points of damage. Uh, Just all right. say it like that. <laughs> such a bitch. Like, is he, is John, he okay? <laughs> John, did you add the plus two for being I did large? add the plus. Okay, In fact, sure. uh, believe it or not, Foundry it actually does. adds it. Whoa, Foundry? Yep. Foundry, Tell me more yeah. about Foundry VTT. <laughs> I refuse. I'm not being paid. Um, <laughs> the next attack at plus 14. Smart. That's going to be a fat miss with a natural 5 on the die. Mm. Alrighty. Uh, okay. So, um, and uh, that's that. Um, and as you look above Grimshaw, you can see that the second floor has some holes in it. Some retconned windows. Now they're just holes. <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, I mean the the floor above as yeah. you look. Like so some of the floor boards themselves are broken, and okay. you know, uh, and they said they were going to tear this thing down. It m- right. makes sense why, why they would start to tear it down. Um, uh, have you ever seen the the ceiling cat meme? Yes. Yeah. Oh uh, no. That happens as a third one oh, jumps down. No. Almost oh, in shit. front of you. Oh shit! Is this oh, Captain Crunch's God. "Oops, all norm borax"? What's going on? <laughs> uh, this one jumps down, um, and then it will make its way over to you. And I strike it. And you strike it because I was ready. That's right, you readied an action for. But a I was not away. ready because I got a twenty-four. Yep, that'll be a mess. Ah, they're, uh, they're coming from the ceilings. They're coming from the roofs or windows, <laughs> undetermined. They're everywhere. <laughs> they're in the trees. Uh, it's gonna be he's a natural one. <gasps> oh, what's that? What's that meme? He's in the goddamn walls. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I love uh, me a nat one. Caught your attack. This attack grants. Uh, and triggers a trip or shove as a reaction by your enemy. Ooh. Oh. Does that mean I have to roll for it, though? Yes. Okay. Um, <laughs> it has. It also, it also consumes your reaction. Well, I already used my reaction to do my to do my um, ready to action, so I don't get a reaction until oh, right. my next turn. Okay. So you don't get you don't do anything. Damn. You don't get to do anything then. Okay. Oh, it just misses. Big fat yep. mess. Big, 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 fat, plump miss on the Orinvorax here. Uh, but I look at that cat and I want to trip it so badly. I like to think there was going to be a beautiful moment where he, he swung out with his paw and you grabbed it, and in that moment you taught him how to shake. Ooh. And there was a beautiful friendship that was formed. Whoa. Shakes with all four all <laughs> on the side. <laughs> they rip your face off. <laughs> uh, so it comes to Halleck's turn. Um, Halaga, uh, seeing this going on, uh, how badly were you hurt with that hit there, Elkwood? Uh, I got hit for... <laughs> I'm not paying attention. Uh, no, I got hit... I think it was like 23 points of damage or something like that. It, it, I mean, I'm back down to... Yeah, it was like 23 or 26 points. Okay, um, uh, would that be enough for a heal for him? No, it wouldn't, because he already gets a plus 24 from his stuff, so. Uh, okay, so not enough for that yet. Um, in which case, he is going to... He already stay, cast Bless today. Stay back. Stay back. Uh, I mean, if you say that, then... Use a Guiding he, Lance wait. and miss. Does Sanctuary <laughs> follow you by chance? Sanctuary's on yourself. Yeah, no, but I'm saying like, yeah, he wouldn't he wouldn't cast sanctuary though. Um, <laughs> he he does have one he does have another spell, but it is a touch spell, and you just told him to stay back. Uh, he will. He also doesn't want to ready. He'll just delay until so, until somebody takes touch the like, kitty. That's the. I mean, he 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 his, his. I'll tell you what his focus spell is. 
this focus spell that he gets from being the cleric of Zankatan is called Savor the Sting. Uh, mm. It's a touch. It's a touch spell, which is, is why it stinks. But uh, you inflict pain upon the target and revel in their anguish. Uh, this deals three d four mental damage and three d four persistent mental damage. That's already heightened, by the way. Um, oh, damn, that's not uh, bad. Uh, the target must attempt a will save as long as the target is taking persistent damage from the spell. You gain a plus one status bonus to attack rolls and skill checks against the target. Oh, that's actually kind of a crazy spell. Yeah, oh, it's, it's cool. Yeah, it's uh, cool. and and there's there's a there's a levels of success and failure. Um, failure is uh, failure is the, is that critical failure is the target takes double initial and persistent damage. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna be making a so, war priest of Zankuthan next. I know, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> just for this spell, yeah, it's, it's a good one. Um, so he will just delay uh, until until that happens, um, until until somebody takes significant damage. Uh, Kezra, it's your turn. Kezra will delay. He will delay as well. Um, are you delaying for anything specific, or are you just... Uh... I'm just delaying until I see my moment. Okay, gotcha. Uh, Alright, so back to the top of the round of round two. Um, the Orin Vorax that was in the center of the room that was eating the pig. Uh, it is going to use its actions to run up to you, Grimshaw. Um, so it's got a land speed of that much. Does the stench do. do anything at all? Uh, yeah, so it, it the, I'll tell you, the um, the one that was upstairs, uh, it had smelled it, and it was kind of looking down at it, and it was sort of trying to inspect it. Uh, but it, so it was, it was, it was on, it was on the second floor, and it was looking down the hole at whatever that was. It was just the smell was keeping it away. But it was really, really curious about it. Um, the other one down, uh, the other, the other one down below, as you guys were were perceiving, he was too, he was too into his meal. Yeah. Um, Sorry, right. So uh, he had to use two actions to get over to you, Grimshaw, mm-hmm. but he is going to reach out with his jaws and try to bite into you. Yeah. Uh, that is going to be 28 to hit. That's a miss. It's a miss. What's your okay. AC since you have bonus for me right now? Uh, 33. Well, remember, you. Uh, I think we looked into it. The only thing that they can get is they get the damage reduction for uh, their shield. Yeah. yeah so. Um, oh, the AC bonus is not for adjacent? Cre- no, no, more. no. So the, the, the only thing he can do is that if he shield blocks for you... Uh, uh. He, you'll you, you'll get you get the damage reduction from the shield, but you you don't actually get like the AC bonus. Oh, uh, okay. Um, so I know it was a bummer when, when we were doing the level up. I read that and I was like, oh, it's not as cool as I thought. Mm. This is pretty cool. Uh, okay, uh, Elkwood, it's your turn. Nope, okay, it's my so, turn. I'm oh, taking my turn now. Never mind. So Kezra to all these Orvorex suddenly suddenly looks imposing and large and dark as he casts uh, fear on all three of them. They all roll will will saves. Gotcha. Alright, I will go uh, closest to farthest. So the one that's closest to you, uh, he gets a 22. Fail. Okay. Uh, Next one, uh, these are the two that are in front of Grimshaw here. So going left to right. That one got a 37 total. Uh, Just a success, so... Be Just a one. success, okay. All right, uh, and then the second one it got a natural twenty on that one, so he Jeez. is unaffected. <laughs> All right, so uh, the one close to me is frightened two. The one that got success is frightened one, and got then it. a natural twenty. You bastard. Yep. I know. Uh, and okay, so this with my one last gets action, it. I will cast shield. Okay. Uh, All righty then. Uh, Elkwood, now it is your turn. Okay. Uh, so this thing jumps down, chomps him right in his side, like his leather armor doesn't do that much. Like at this, he's like, "Oh, fuck!" Yeah, this <laughs> second time in a row, I've been attacked. <laughs> Why me? Uh, he's going to see. There's since he's hasted, he can take an action. Okay, so what he's going to do is take an action to step twice using Elvish Step Mm -hmm. and take two actions to hurl, like, quick draws the Eclipse out and 
takes a two action to hurl it at this thing. Alrighty. Um, that would be a 38 to hit. Uh, 38 to hit because it is frightened too. That is a critical hit. Fuck. Yeah. Yes. Blind that Holy bitch. Shit. Critical damage. 44 points of damage. Oh my god. Lord. <laughs> what? From the eclipse. <laughs> Whoo. Yep. I think Elkwood should two. be illegal. <laughs> that, I mean, the eclipse, I mean, there's nothing even game breaking about that. Mm. Except the fact that this thing is uh, blind now. It is blind mm. now. That is, that is uh, quite the predicament for it. Uh, it is blinded, uh, which <laughs> you can't see. All normal terrain is difficult to view. You can't detect anything using vision. Uh, I'll tell you, this thing is sent, so it's not entirely useless here. But yeah. uh, you auto- automatically critically fail perception checks that require you to be able to see. And your vision is is your if your vision if your, is your only precise sense. You take a minus four pen- status penalty to perception checks. Your immune to visual effects of blinded, oppressed, bad, dazzled. So, question. Uh, okay, then. with the overwhelming smell of the anus in the area, mm. is their scent particularly useful right now? Hmm. I really like that. I will say that the anus has worked. Yay! The anus was successful. The anus was successful. Let's be honest. The anus always works. <laughs> Mission anus drop success. If you're going to include an anus in a plan, <laughs> it's good luck. We shall call it Preparation Age. <laughs> I love it when a plan comes to an anus. <laughs> Prepar- is, this, is Preparation <laughs> Anus going to be the, the title? <laughs> I don't know. Operation Preparation Age sounds like a good one. Uh, uh, <laughs> might get sued by uh, oh, yeah, the company owns it. <laughs> um, but now that he has one more action left, he is going to hurl it again, just by itself. All right. And plus 16, uh, and he got a 32. A 32, that 16 is 16 on it. die, so beautiful. There we go. This one, however, is 12 points of damage. Okay. Chunking it again for a little bit more. Yep, and uh, he is done. And he's done. Uh, Grimshaw, it's your turn. Okay, so because this thing in front of me is blind, is it flat-footed or not? I couldn't find anything on that. It is It is not blind, the one that's in front of you. It is It is frightened. Oh, uh, 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 the one below is the one that's blind. Correct. Hmm. The one in front of you is frightened. And that one's frightened as well. The one below is frightened as well? Yep. Yeah. So yeah. So the 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 one that uh the one that Elkwood just hit that's the one that's frightened two and mm. blind. The one that's in front of you, Grimshaw, is only frightened one. Mm. And there's another one in front of you that 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 has no status effects at all. So. Do you want to peer into Grimshaw's past? Oh, yeah, we can do that. Okay. A uh, what? So, yeah. Uh, all right. So. Here's the thing. Grimshaw hears a low thrumming in his head at this point. The thrumming seems to get louder and louder. The sound becomes deafening as we zoom in on Grimshaw's face, contorted in pain in this exact moment. His face gradually changes to ease, but the scene around him is different. We're no longer surrounded by the Ornvoraxes. Grimshaw is instead surrounded by orcs. They move as a group under the cover of the early dawn, silently moving across the rocky, the rocky crags of the Manandor Mountains. We see the group post up at several spots for several hours waiting for game, but none appearing. You can see the vexation of their faces as they argue amongst themselves. What are we going to do? We can't turn back empty-handed. Another barks, let's split up! Grimshaw, take care, Bath and Ugora, up past there. As he points to an uncharted mountain peak, we will cover the rest of the usual spots and meet back here in three hours. The group responds with gruff grunts of affirmation and split up. As Grimshaw and his two hunting mates make their way over the small peak of the mountain, suddenly in the sky, a bright blue orb appears. It flits in and out of existence, 
every time getting closer and closer before crashing into the mountainside 20 feet from the group. The sound is horrifying. A loud thrumming accompanied by the screams of a thousand voices that end in a cacophony of splintering rock. From the stone comes a blast of intense energy that washes over the three of them. Everyone and everything becomes frozen. The orc's faces contorted in a, sh- in a shout to take cover. Splintered rock hangs in the air. Everything is perfectly still. Except for Grimshaw and a pulsing blue light in the center of the newly formed crater. Grimshaw, you feel a compulsion to approach the light as you do. It feels so familiar. The closer you get, the more this gnawing feeling in the back of your skull intensifies until you realize the light, it has always been there. Flashes of memory has now become clear. Mundane moments in time where a twinkling blue light in the corner of your eye would appear. This unexplained twinkling light in the corner of your eye has been a good luck charm. Good fortune seemed to follow the light. Finding the abandoned building to live in in Ridwan, the twinkling light. Befriending the group of kids, the twinkling light. Being captured by the shattered fang, the twinkling light. A good hunt, the light. A fight won, the light. It has always been there. But now, it's here. When you peer into the crater, you see that the orb has shattered into pieces. Pieces pieces of blue, glass-like material scattered everywhere. In the center of the crater is a conical shard, twinkling with blue light. Before you consider what to do next, you are suddenly right next to it. The low thrumming sound resumes. You reach out your hand to touch the shard and become encased in the twinkling light. The thrumming now becomes deafening and your head begins to pound. You bring your hands to your head and tilt it backwards to scream in pain, just in time to see a gigantic worm made of white and blue twinkling stars open its maw and devour you. Instantly you wake on the ground with your two hunting companions around you, looks of worry on their faces, which fade into sighs of relief. One minute we're walking around, and you're collapsed to the ground. I told Grongal that he, that he, he, is, he has been pushing us too hard. Grimshaw shoots up in this moment. You didn't see it? Uh, Carbeth replies, See what? The orb, the crater... What are you talking about, Grimshaw? You're sounding like you have mountain madness. I told you, one minute we're walking along and the next you collapse. But I... Uh, uh, you're right, Garbeth. I, I probably just need some rest. And right as you get up, Grimshaw, blackout. You wake up on the ground where your two hunting companions around you again. Looks of worry on their faces, which fade into sighs of relief. One minute, we're walking, or we're walking along. The next, you're collapsing on the ground. I told Krongal that he's been pushing us too hard. No, no. Grimshaw replies. No, wait, you already said that. Said what? What you just said. As you try to stand up, you black out again. Over and over again, these few moments repeat again and again and again. No matter what you say or what you do, Grimshaw, you keep replaying this moment in time. The sequence is blur. At first, you try to do anything to get away. One time, you try to jump up right away and start running, only to find yourself waking up again in about 30 seconds. Another time, you plead to the gods to release you from this temporal prison. After about the 50th time going through the sequence, you resolve to just sit and wait for the loop to start, wondering if this will be your existence. Then you see it, the twinkling light in the corner of your eye. You turn to see it, and the worm made of blue blue and white twinkling stars. Not gigantic and devouring, but near and small. You reach out your hand, and the worm swirls around it. You twist your hand in motions, not unlike an arcane caster, and you feel a rush of power through your body. 
just as Carveth finishes saying, I told Krongal he has been pushing us too hard. You stand up, expecting to wake up again, but instead Carveth and Urgura are staring at you. Urgura, with a bit of worry, returning to his face, says, You okay, Grimshaw? Oh, yes. Never been better. And I'll see you guys next week. <laughs> Spooky. <laughs> well, there's that uh, thing, like, from the beginning. Uh, time, uh, superpowers, and a drawback. Right? <laughs> there it is. <laughs> time travel. Trapped in a loop. <laughs> Trapped in a loop. <laughs> Hello there, punchers. Uh, the holidays are upon us once again, and you know what that means. Time to buy some shiny click clacks and math rocks for all your friends and family. And what a great place to do it over at greenleafgeek.com. Uh, that's right. If you go to greenleafgeek.com and use the code Dragon Punch Squad at checkout, you will get a whole 10% off selected items. So make sure to buy this special thing for that special someone, and we will see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.